Hello guys, this is Julian, OH8STN from the YouTube channel Survival Tech Nord. I think it would be safe to say we've been able to demonstrate off-grid portable power for communications quite effectively on the channel. Our DIY portable power and battery pack building library already includes some quite impressive projects for off-grid field communications. On the first pack, we used lithium-ion 18650 cells. The second pack, we switched over to Headway uh, to build a 12 amp 128 watt hour pack. The third pack, we went to 26650s using A123 lithium iron phosphate cells. And finally, the Headway 50 amp pack 128 watt hours. All of these packs are still going strong and still in use today. Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Now my buddy Micah from the YouTube channel ebikeschool.com also happens to be a product manager for verusein.com. That's the maker of these 18650 battery pack building kits. I would say a few of the main features are not needing to spot weld the 18650 batteries, being able to assemble or disassemble our battery packs and reuse them or reconfigure them into smaller or larger packs. The Verusian kit also helps us avoid the cost of a battery spot welder and allows us to service those packs if necessary. So stick with me a while and I'll show you how to build one. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a signed narrative. So today we're going to use the Verusian kit to build a 4S4P 18650 battery pack. So the Verusian kit allows us to use lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate 18650s to build a battery pack in the configuration of our choice. The Verusian kit is also an excellent way to build the internal battery pack for your solar generator or battery box project. Today's build is going to be a 4.4 amp hour pack using lithium iron phosphate cells. This is just a small portable pack I'll use for emergency communications or rapid deployment. With that said, we can also use this pack as an emergency power source for lighting or for a DC powered refrigerator, for example. Like all of the portable power projects on this channel, this one is also designed to be topped up using any solar power source. Despite its small size, this is the core component to a solar generator, and it definitely has a place in our emergency communications go kit. We'll be using version 2 of Verusin's battery building kit. Verusin's version 2 kit includes 60 terminal caps, 60 nickel plated copper alloy nuts, 70 nickel plated pure copper bus bars, 4 wire clamps and 4 cable ties. Let's look at the rest of the gear we'll need to make this battery kit complete. Since our build is lithium iron phosphate, we'll need to acquire our own lithium iron phosphate uh, 18650 cells. We'll also need to acquire a BMS. Since we want to charge this off of solar power, we'll also need to come up with a solar charge controller, and I haven't decided on which one to use yet. Perhaps we'll leave it up to the builder to decide which solar charge controller is the right one for their build. I'll also be using a board from k9jeb.com for DC distribution. You may have already seen the blog post on this. It's called Better DC Distribution for Portable Ops. I'll leave a link in the description if you haven't. And of course, we'll need a few other things like wire and connectors and things like that. Make sure the wire you use is the proper gauge for the amount of amps you're going to pull out of the pack. Finally, make sure you have the right crimping tools for the wire and the connectors that you're using in your build. Naturally, an accurate multimeter is a good tool to have for this build as well. Before we get started, we want to go through and charge up all of the cells. Then check the voltage of those cells to make sure you don't have any stragglers or low voltage cells in the group. With these cells charged and inspected, we can go ahead and put them into groups. This is what our 4.4 amp hour pack is going to look like before the bus bars are on, but with the end caps put together. The end caps have four sides and each side has either a slot or a channel. 
So during the installation, we need to maintain some continuity, ensuring the slot on one side and the opposite channel on the other. In this video perspective, you can see that one end of the end cap is always an exact opposite of the other. Despite the color of the end cap, you may notice that the slots and channels maintain their continuity throughout each layer. The only time we reverse the end caps is after we complete a layer and go on to the next one. Micah has some pretty amazing videos on putting these end caps and packs together. I'll put links in the description for some of those videos. The technique I'm using to put my pack together is one by one, side to side. As I'm doing a two layer pack, one layer is always exactly reverse of the other one in terms of the end caps. Now the only way these layers are going to go together is if each end cap has been installed correctly. If they have, the layers will slot together extremely easily. This is what our pack will look like with the end caps on and the layers combined. Of course the bus bars are not installed yet. And now we'll do a little bit of quality control. We'll use our multimeter to make sure we have a voltage on each end of the end caps. Please don't mind my quality control too much. I assure you, uh, later in the build, if there were any problems, this will save you time and effort. Now, if you have some trouble uh, getting those end caps to seat correctly, you can use a small hand vise applying very light pressure to seat those end caps correctly. And normally you don't have to do this because they go on pretty easily, but uh, anyway, after you're done, go ahead and re-inspect each cell uh, for voltage on either side of the end caps. Then we can move on. Pay attention here, guys. It's extremely important to understand the correct connections and route uh, the bus bars are taking uh, throughout the pack. Sometimes I almost think they should be the channel moto, but uh, I have to say, if you get this wrong, if you don't understand and you don't pay attention, very bad things will happen. So pay attention to the route I'm showing you on the screen. It follows exactly the diagram that's also up on the screen. Now you should start to understand how we're doing the four in series and four in parallel. So let's start inserting those bus bars. In this case, I think a video is worth about 10,000 words, so I'm not going to talk during the bus bar installation. Even with the time-lapse video, that's all pretty clear. Now we can do one more quality inspection with our multimeter to check the overall voltage of the pack. So I don't just inspect the voltage of the entire pack, I also inspect the voltage of the parallel sets. If you did the quality inspections along the build, then the voltage should be exactly what you expect it to be. 
Once you've validated good voltage on each parallel set, we can go ahead to setting up the BMS and the output wires. There are so many different combinations or potential BMS boards and charge controllers that I have no way to know which one you're using. I decided on using one from eBay on this build. It's easy to obtain and it's easy to set up. So the specs of the board say it's rated for 20 amps. I wouldn't run this at 20 amps for long periods of time. But it does balance the cells and it's been solid so far. I wouldn't trust this budget option to protect my headway cells, but uh, for these cheap 18650s, why not? So if you want to try it out, you'll find a link for this board in the description. Whichever BMS board you're going to use, make sure it has documentation about its wiring and specs. So when you're done soldering the BMS, this is what it should look like. On the outside uh, connections, we have the battery terminals. On the inside, we have charge and discharge terminals. So thankfully, the Veruzin kit eliminates the need to solder the 18650 cells, but we still need to solder the battery tabs uh, between the BMS and the battery pack itself. Now, even though we've reached this point in the build, I don't want you to skip ahead. Pay attention here because we're going to do something a bit strange. So when we're wiring up the BMS, we're going to use both the battery plus and battery minus uh, ports on the BMS, in addition to the balance ports, which also have battery plus and battery minus. So the point is, you may be tempted to simply connect your battery pack using the balance lead on the BMS. Now, surprisingly, the BMS will work that way, but you won't be able to get as much amperage out of the battery pack, even though your cells are rated for it. The reason for that failure is the gauge of the BMS balance wires. To remedy this problem, we're going to use all five of the BMS leads on the balance port, but we're also going to use the battery plus and battery minus leads directly to the battery plus and battery minus of the pack. This will ensure an adequate gauge cable for the amount of amps we're trying to pull out of the pack. Now, because this is a Veruzan build, I decided to go ahead and crimp on the balance connector leads so that we can uh, screw them onto the pack. Set that balance lead off to the side for a moment. We'll come back to that shortly. So let's start by attaching our battery plus and battery minus leads to the BMS. Now you can clearly see how the uh, battery plus and battery minus on the BMS go to the battery plus and battery minus on the battery pack itself. Just a side note here, guys. It would be an extremely good idea to add fuses on both the uh, plus and minus leads between the BMS and the battery pack. So now we're going to go ahead and install those balance leads. As an added measure of safety, don't connect the balance lead to the BMS board yet. With the balance lead disconnected, we're going to connect uh, B4, B3, B2, B1, and B- onto their respective places on the pack. The diagram up on the screen is only good for the BMS that I've used in the video. You can find a link to that in the description. Now we'll just clean up those wires, make them look nice, and route them to the side of the battery pack where the BMS will be mounted. 
Now we can go ahead and connect that balance lead to the BMS. Normally I would use some Kapton tape to cover and protect the BMS, but I ran out, so I couldn't do it for this video. So we're just gonna go ahead and shrink wrap everything for now. And uh, when I get that Kapton tape, I'll update it when I take this pack out into the field. Now let's add some power pole connectors. Of course, you can use whatever connectors you like, XT60, XT90, and so on. As a side note, no regrets on this power pole crimper. It was a great investment. And here's what our battery pack looks like when it's all put together and wrapped up. So building an 18650 pack with the Vruz in kit is definitely going to be larger than uh, spot welding the 18650s. But what we lose in size, we gain in modularity and repurposing the cells if we want to. Let's head over to the FT891 and see if we can draw some amps out of this pack. We'll start it off at 10 watts, then jump up to 20. If that works, we'll jump up to 30, and if that works, we'll jump up to 50 watts. Well, it does exactly what it says it should do. I think if you want to avoid uh, ruining or destroying your 18650 cells with soldering them, the Vruz End Kit is a magnificent option. The Vruz End Kit also gives us the freedom to build the pack in almost any shape we like. So, these are the two packs I built with the kit. A 4.4 amp hour and a 2.2 amp hour for the 817. What might surprise you is both of these packs power the FT891. Huge amount of information in the description, guys, so don't forget to have a look. Patreon and PayPal supporters, you're absolutely magnificent. I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a thumbs up and perhaps a comment. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.